Parshas Korach, a vort from the Parsha. The following vort is an adaptation from a mimar found in Lukute Torah by the Altar Rebbe of Chabad, Rabbi Shneer Zalman of Liadi of Blessed Memory, on the verse, Vihine Parach Mate Aharon, which means, And behold, the staff of Aaron had blossomed uh, with almonds. And this is actually my Bar Mitzvah Parsha, Parsha's Korach. And the theme of this week's Torah portion, Korach, is the unique status of Aaron and his descendants as the Kohanim, Kohanim, priests of the Jewish people. God had chosen Moses to lead the Jews and his brother Aaron to serve as high priest. A cousin of theirs, Korach, challenged their authority, asking why he should not serve instead. After dealing with Korach and his followers by causing them to be miraculously slaughtered by the earth, God instructed Moshe to conduct a public demonstration of his preference. Each tribe head, including Aaron for the tribe of Levi, Levi was to submit a rod, and the leader whom God chose would be identified by the miraculous blossoming of his rod. The Torah recounts in Numbers 17.23, And it came to pass that on the following day Moshe went into the tent of the testimony, where he had left the rods, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and brought forth buds and blossomed and yielded almonds. What is the symbolism of this unique sign? Why did blossoming almonds, in particular, show that Aaron was the true Kohen? Before addressing this issue, let us first resolve a seeming contradiction. Each day we beseech God to grant, grant us our various needs. For example, we pray in Shemun Esrei, Heal us, O God, bless this year and all of its varied crops. And similar requests, yet why should this daily supplication be necessary? It is an established principle that all a person's needs for the year are allocated in advance on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. After all our earnest high holiday prayers for a good year in response to which God set aside for us, whatever he saw fit, why do we have to keep asking day in and day out for health, food, and so on? The answer is, that the allocation on Rosh Hashanah is a broad, general allocation for the year, but it does not necessarily determine when and in what amounts the benefits will be released. For exa An example is given in the Talmud, Rosh Hashanah 17b, is that while a certain amount of rainfall may have been decreed for a particular year, that by, its, that by itself does not determine whether the crops will be good or bad. It is possible for abundant rain to fall out of season, when it is not needed, but not enough during the growing season. It is also possible for rainfall to occur in geographic locations that do not need that do not need it, for example, forests of the desert, yet not on farms and gardens. Thus it is perfectly appropriate to pray steadily for beneficial rain, just the right amount spread throughout the year and in places where it will do some good. Another example might be the manner in which a corporate employee is reimbursed from his or her expense account at the beginning of the, each year. Let's say the employee's expense account for the year is determined. The funds are allocated for that person's use. However, this is a far cry from saying that the money is, has literally been given to the person. Before they actually see the funds, the person must first submit a reimbursement request, which must be filled out properly with all the I's dotted and T's crossed, and wait for it to go through the proper channels. Each step along the way, someone reviews the form, and if all goes well, the money is eventually given to the employee. But it is also possible that for some reason, a supervisor somewhere along the chain will question something about the request. The employee is seeking a reimbursement for new tires on the company car. Didn't they just replace their tires recently? Or perhaps the sum of $1,000 seems excessive for that outsourced work couldn't have been found for less. It is even possible that nothing in particular is amiss with the request, but the employee pers personally is in disfavor of management is punishing them by scrutinizing every request for funds in detail. The opposite could also happen. 
and especially valuable and favored employee might enjoy the benefit of their superiors approving their expense expense requests with minimum to, or no scrutiny. Just give them whatever they want. The only thing that is out of the question is to increase the size of the expense account. This can be done only at the beginning of the year when the budget is being set or the, the contract negotiated, but once it has been determined, it is generally final. When we pray for our daily needs, we hope to get what we ask for right away. However, this is not always granted, even if the thing requested was budgeted for on Rosh Hashanah. It is conceivable that, like the person in the expense account example, a person's prayers are fast-tracked. Perhaps they deserve special treatment because of some mitzvah they have done, or God forbid, hampered by their relationship with God generally. There may be spiritual, there may be the spiritual equivalent of nitpicking supervisors, accusers, or denouncers that would draw attention to one's sins otherwise question one's merits that's holding the new flow of blessing to the person. We find an example of this in the Torah. God had foretold to King David that his son Shlomo Solomon would become king over the Jews and build a holy temple. See Chronicles 9, 1 Chronicles 9-10. Yet when David commanded Sadok the priest, the prophet Nathan and Benihu the son of Yoyada to take Shlomo to the town of Gihon and there anoint him as king, Benihu answered, in Kings, First Kings one thirty six, Amen. May God say so. Our sages point out in Barachus Rabba Vayishlach seventy six that seemingly Benayahu should not have needed to wish for God to decree as much, but he had already decreed for he had already decreed this promise to David. However, they explained that Benayahu meant that God should not allow anything to hamper the fulfillment of His word since many accusers, or categorian, will arise between here and Gihom. It is the role of the Kohanim to guard against this, and to expedite God's blessings to the Jews. To borrow one more from that expense account example, there are perhaps, like benevolent mentor in management, better yet, the employee's uncle who owns the company, and they have the power to speed the funds through. Indeed, the priestly blessing recited on uh, as a part of our holiday prayers, see Numbers 6.22-27, the Kohanim bless us with this form of Godspeed. This is hinted at by Aharon's name, which is spelled the same Hebrew letters as the word Nireh. We will see. This is a reference to the verse in Psalms, Be'orcha Nireh Or, for with you, O God, is the source of life. In your light, we shall see light. That is, all the light, or blessing, we shall see from God, who is the source of all, comes to us through the spiritual channel of Aaron and his descendants, the Kohanim. Blessings from God originate in God's own goodness, which is a spiritual level so lofty that we cannot compare it to any form of blessing or goodness known to us. In fact, our forefather Abraham embodied the attribute of kindness, nevertheless, said of himself in Genesis eighteen twenty seven, I am dust and ashes. What he meant is that although he epitomized, indeed embodied, God's attribute of kindness in this world, as explained elsewhere, there was nevertheless a vast difference between the godly kindness compressed, as it were, within the human personality of Abraham and God's attribute of kindness as known to God himself, that Abraham's version was but dust and ashes compared to the real thing. On the way from God's own goodness all the way down to its expression in physical, worldly goodness, health, food, etc., that mortals can enjoy, there are innumerable spiritual steps along the way. At each such point, the spiritual goodness, the blessing from God, becomes a bit more material, but at each point, also the question may arise, is, it in, is the intended recipient worthy that this extraordinary action be taken, that his or her blessing should proceed to the next stage. This concept, the initial allocation and confirmation on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, followed by the ongoing daily allotment of a person's blessing depending on their merit, is related to the Talmudic dispute in Rosh Hashanah 16a as to whether one is judged on Rosh Hashanah or every day. However, this is not the place to analyze this dispute in detail. 
The Kohanim's contribution is to expedite this unimaginable journey, to see that to it that our blessings reach us speedily and without impediment along the way. This is a function of God's love for us and is similar to what is written about God's refusal to listen to the sorcerer Bilam as he tried to curse the Jews, God forbid, through mentioning their shortcomings. We are told in Deuteronomy 23.6, God, your God, would not listen to the Bilam. For God, your God, loved you. God would not allow anything to stand in the way of his relationship with us. Similarly, the Kohanim recite before the blessing for the people who has sanctified us with his mitzvot and commanded us to bless his people Israel with love. The distinction explained above between the ordinarily lengthy course of God's blessings to the world and the spiritual fast track is hinted at by the verse in Psalms 17, uh, I'm sorry, Psalms 147.15, he sends forth his command upon the earth, his word runs very swiftly. The first half of this verse refers to the ordinary progression of the blessing with God, which God sends forth. However, when we enjoy the spiritual special treatment conferred through the Kohanim and the priestly blessing, his word runs very swiftly. With the above in mind, we can understand the symbolism of almonds as a sign of the priesthood. Our sages teach, toward the end of Kohelis Rabbah 115b, what is the distinctive feature of this almond? From the time it sprouts to the time it ripens, it's only 21 days. Almonds ripen faster than any other produce. And indeed, this fact is expressed by the Hebrew word for almond, shaked, which connotes speed and zeal, as it is written in Jeremiah 1, 11, 12. And the word of God came to me saying, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, I see the stick, a stick of an almond tree, and God said, God said to me, you have perceived well, for I hasten to perform my word. The reason God's kindness flows so swiftly through Aaron and his descendants is that spiritually there are two levels of kindness known as eternal kindness, chesed olam, which can be translated as worldly kindness, and a higher level called great kindness, rav chesed. Aaron and the priests draw a blessing to the Jews from the level of great kindness, rav chesed, which is so strong in its flow that is like a mighty river that simply sweeps away any attempts to dam it up with sticks and things. Finally, God is referred to in the Shemona Esrei prayer as High God, who renders Gomel good kindnesses. The description of God's kindness as good is an allusion to what is written about the God, godly light he created, Genesis 1-4. And God saw that the light was good. As explained above, this image of light can be understood as applying the flow of God's blessings upon us, which is why the name Aaron is related to the word, we will see God's light. Thus, the above phrase uses the Hebrew word gomel, renders or performs, to describe the flow of God's kindness or blessing to and blessing to us. It is in fact a common use of the word as in the expression gemil as performing acts of kindness. This is the same word used in our verse about Aaron's rod, which as we now see, was the symbol of the speedy transmission that godly light of that godly light to us. The Gemilas Vaigmol Shkedim, it ripened into almonds. Have a great Shabbos.